hey guys welcome or welcome back again to the channel so guys if it's your first time coming across this channel please kindly subscribe to this channel and turn on our bell notification so you'll be the first to be notified whenever we post in this channel to you all my returning subscribers i see you all i love you all and i appreciate you all okay. guys in today's video i'll be discussing about what nobody tells you about vaginal betting and uh, the simple truths and all you need to know about vaginal but if you're going into marriage if you are still single if you are married already and um maybe you've been trying cs and uh, you are preparing to get uh, pregnant or you're pregnant already and uh, you're preparing uh, for your childbirth. So I think this video is um, for you. The first point here I want you to note is that a uh, childbirth is uh, painful, <laughs> but it's manageable, yes. And uh, second, uh, you should listen to your doctor and your midwife. Uh, they know what is best for you and also um first child birth is always not uh, pleasant uh, because of a uh, episiotomy and uh, each baby is different and uh, first time moms uh, they may experience a longer uh, longer contraction which is uh, which may take 12 to 18 hours even 20 hours some people 24 hours so these are the points i want you to know yeah vagina bath is the most common and the safest um type of childbirth uh, for me because after that uh, you'll be free to walk around slowly do your things and uh, yeah spend time with your baby if you have a vagina but uh recovery can take um from four weeks to six weeks uh or more if you had a perineal or what we call episiotomy perineal tear is a is like is a vaginal tear uh during childbirth um maybe the vagina is a uh, it can't stretch well or maybe the the head of the baby is too big so this is where you get what is called perennial tear okay so uh episiotomy is uh the cord uh to widen the vagina which will be stitched back after delivering of the child and the uh, placenta uh yeah they usually give that cut for a wider opening so that it will also help the mother to deliver the baby so that is why you get this uh, episiotomy or perineal tear perineal tear is usually when the vagina tears on its own uh, maybe the head of the baby is too big or the vagina is can't be that uh, has a limited uh, size of a uh, stretchy so that is where you get pairing out usually uh, most people are not aware that their doctor is going to their doctor or their midwife is about to perform a episiotomy yes why some are told uh, some are told they some are not they'll just cut you why some they will be like okay i'm cutting now and before you know it why they cut you so it will be able for you for the head of the baby to come out easily the next is contraction contraction is the most painful aspect of delivery contraction contraction and uh yeah what i will say is a uh, contraction is the tightening of the uterine muscles uh muscle fiber that occurs uh, sorry for um, the noise in the background uh 
the tightening of the uterine muscle fibers that occur briefly and uh, intermittently throughout pregnancy uh, more regularly forcefully and uh, active during labor uh, the more stronger and stronger you have contraction it means that the baby is already there and the baby wants to come out and see the world contraction is not something that uh, we joke with it's really not something we joke with because gosh contraction this thing like i said is the tightening of the uterine uh, muscles uh, at a time it will be as if your waist you see it usually comes to the back your waist is as if your waist is pulling out the pains is not here guys it's not here but you pull through so guys next step when you have gotten to the stage is prayer prayer is the key prayer is the only solution prayer is what will give you the confidence Prayer is what will pull you through. Um, anything that has to do with uh, life also has to do with death. So uh, at this stage, you pray and give your life to God. Um, yeah, prayer is only the key. Uh, then you go through the, you enter into the main deal, which is the labor. Listen to your doctor and your midwife. They know what is best for you and they will, and by listening to them and uh, following their instructions it will help you and pull you through push as if you're having a bow movement you know what is bow movement is like uh, when you are going to pull yes so you push as if you're having a bow movement give it all you've got stay focused and uh, change positions uh, when you are instructed by either your doctor or your midwife also rest between your contractions because sometimes the contractions will come stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger you scream you some people they cry you scream and at the time it will release you you'll be fine again so rest between those contractions trust your instincts and uh, stop pushing when you are instructed to stop then you stop um during this delivery time there is this uh, thing we call a from 1 cm to 1 cm dilated to 10 cm dilated when you are 1 or 2 cm it means that the baby is still not yet coming but when you're from 8 to 10 cm, it means that the head of the baby is already there. So whenever you hear um, uh, you are dilated, uh, 6 uh, cm, 8 cm, just know that um, yeah, your baby is almost there. Uh, 10 cm is that the head of the baby is there so that is why they tell you to push and when you are doing that make sure that you are you are, you lie down flat and relaxed and then your two legs both the left and the right is up uh, like you're resting them on the table and you open your legs spread your legs wide spread your legs wide and uh, relax them well as your midwife or your doctor will help you so that that way it will be easy for the baby to be delivered or midwives uh, might instruct you not to push yet due to your baby is not yet uh, ready or maybe they want to put you on an epidural uh, then you are required to once they ask you to start pushing you are required to uh, continuous pushing uh, once you feel the baby is uh, closer to your bow and uh, just to expel the baby out to be free and the baby head usually comes first then the both shoulders and the butt and then the cutting the baby's uh, umbilical cord follows next uh, which is after you as the mother might must have carried your baby cuddle your baby see your baby spend a little minute with your baby and then they take the baby from you and they cut the 
umbilical. After so you've given birth here, your midwife will uh, inspect your vaginal and uh, the perineum area. The perineum area is uh, the area between the vagina to the anus and uh, just to see if uh, how the tears there is or the episiotomy you have. And this is what we call a uh, laceration laceration is a deep cut or tear in the skin or flesh you will be stitched up uh first you'll be given a local uh, anesthesia so that you don't feel the pain during the stitching and uh, when they are stitching you up they usually use it there's this one they use a uh, uh, which is called a, a, a rubber uh, a form of a for stitching. That rubber like uh, is something that melts and dissolves easily. It dissolves easily uh, as your body is healing, uh, so will it be dissolving. You don't need to uh, press hot water on that there to avoid it melting. So uh, you leave it as your body is healing it will also be dissolving then there's this other one that uh, they also use in stitching uh, the vagina after birth that one is um, a, like a, a thread which uh, after you must have healed down there you can go to the hospital depending on the time they book appointments with you so that they can uh, go and uh, remove it. Episiotomy, uh, the cut they usually give. Most women, um, they experience it once, others twice. Uh, I remember uh, the last time, uh, I remember uh, when I gave birth uh, to my fourth child. Uh, there's this woman I met. She told me that her baby was so big that they have to cut her again, which is the second cut or uh, episiotomy. They have to give her episiotomy again. So I was like, wow, I never knew that uh, uh, one can uh, have an uh, episiotomy again. And they also stitched her up. Sometimes... um the baby might before you know it the baby will just come out on its own giving you a very big deep cut so all these things are what we see in the process of a vaginal delivery and they also help you in uh, stitching it up. so here after having your baby uh you notice that the vagina can feel a bit looser and uh, softer and open and also bruised or swollen uh, the midwife will assist you to check you over there to make sure that uh, everything is fine there before uh, you will be given uh, a nursing maternity uh, pad to wear and after two to three days, uh, the swelling and the openness should start to reduce by then. And a few days, which is why you don't need to sit on a couch. Uh, you don't need to sit on a couch because uh, the couch is not going to help you. What you need is a rubber uh, seat. A uh, rubber seat where you can sit or a wooden chair. Uh, that is what I learned from my mother. Um, you sit in the rubber chair or a wooden uh, chair where you sit and, cl and always close your both legs and don't sit and leave your legs open wide. No, you sit, you close your legs. That's where you will be healing. So, um, that is it. Uh, the couch is not good for you. Neither is uh, any other one. What you need is that um, the wooden seat or the rubber seat. And you continue sitting there. Uh, continue sitting there and don't get tired of it. Sitting there for one month to two months period of time and also do not be in a hurry to jump into uh, meeting your man instead you wait for a uh, four to five weeks or even six weeks or even more than that 
before you can consider meeting your mom. After uh, bathing your baby, uh, it's good that you take a shower, you take a bath, a very warm bath or a very warm shower. Um, that way it will help to cool off uh, all what you went through uh, during the process of this um, childbirth. And... Uh, um, during the first six weeks, during the first six weeks of uh, your child uh, bed, vaginal delivery, uh, avoid anything strenuous work. All you need is just to eat, sleep and rest. Eat, sleep and rest. Look after yourself and also look after your baby. So that is all I have for this topic today. Share your experience with me in the comment section below. And uh, remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed uh, watching this video. Share this video if you can to your social media handles. And um, subscribe please kindly subscribe to this channel i'm sure you enjoy what we do here subscribe to be a friend of this family uh subscribe to be a member of this family and also follow me up on my instagram handles and my tiktok as well as my facebook handles i love you all i appreciate you all and i hope to see i hope to see you all again in my next video Cheers and bye. Try to let go of all of the nonsense that you, but that you.